Good Tuesday evening, folks. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagius here on November the 12th, 2024 with a tropical update. Here we are in the middle of November. We're talking about another threat potentially emerging out of the Caribbean and heading towards the U.S. as we get in early next week, perhaps the middle of next week as well. That is right now called Invest 99L, meaning it's not quite organized or strong enough yet to garner a name, but it is forecast to get to that potential possibility as we head into the, just the next couple of days. It's out in the Caribbean right now, an area that has really um, given birth to several systems that have impacted the U.S. so far this now hyperactive season. So the Caribbean continues to produce waves like we're seeing with Invest 99L. Models are bullish and consistent on this system developing into our next name storm, which would be Sarah, and it could potentially be a threat to the United States. I want to preface that statement with the caveat that there is a lot of time between now and said potential threats. We're talking if there were to be a threat early in the middle parts of next week, so we got about a week's worth of time uh, to watch this evolve and play out. And there's a lot of variables that have to line up perfectly to bring it to be a threat to the United States again. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in this video. Here's its current state. Tropical Wave Invest 99L. Recall what invest means, investigative area. 99 is a number that we rotate from 90 to 99, and an L means it's in the Atlantic Basin. Right now, it's currently pretty much stationary. Look at how slow it's moving. West at 2 miles per hour. Right now, sitting just to the south of Jamaica, bringing some squally tropical downpours over the island. And it will eventually meander its way into an area that is very favorable for it to develop and potentially develop rapidly. This is an area that can easily foster rapid intensification, like we've seen many times already this season, and overall the environment hasn't changed very much. So this is the development area as it builds on off towards the west over the next few days. Odds of it developing in the next two days has shot up to a high chance, 70%, even greater potential, almost, almost definite at a 90% chance that we get into the next seven days into this area developing. And then from there, it is forecast to take a northwest turn, then a north turn, and potentially a northeast turn. When it takes those turns, of course, will be paramount to what impacts it may bring to not only the Yucatan, or Cuba again. Remember, Raphael made landfall there just last week as a major Category 3, so another system impacting it would not be good. And then even potentially as we get towards Florida uh, by the early to middle parts of next week. So here is the ocean heat content environment. Skin surface temperatures of the ocean still around 88, 89, 90 degrees. So plenty of heat. And it extends down to a depth. So the deeper and warmer it is, the more likely it is to foster rapid intensification. And you see the area it's building into. Plenty of ocean heat content here to use to potentially rapidly intensify. We're getting the first couple runs of the spaghetti plots here. Now, each line is a different computer model. Notice how it's pretty much all over the place with a general trend to the west. Now, why is it kind of all over the place in a pretty big divergence over a short amount of time? Well, the steering is weak right now. You saw it moving only at two miles per hour off to the west. The steering, upper level steering, is pretty much non existent at this time, which will come into play as we go further out in time and it gets into this particular area and really starts to develop. The upper level features are very, very favorable for this to rapidly intensify. But it meanders its way off to the west. Okay, now we're looking at around Friday, Saturday, probably already at that point a tropical storm or even hurricane in that favorable environment. Then from there, it takes that turn to the north. But look at how large of an area of potential turning north that is. It could turn that to the north much farther off to the west, meaning it will go up through the Yucatan, takes that turn a little bit farther to the east, uh, goes right through the uh, Yucatan Strait, Yucatan Channel, and into the Gulf of Mexico or even farther to the east and heads up towards Cuba and eventually Florida. But notice many of these, these scenarios that turn north do head northeast and put the western coast of Florida in play yet again. Large area of potential here, a lot of time to watch it, but this is how the first couple runs are looking. 
How about our long range global models? We're talking about the European that you'll see in the red and the yellow that you'll see uh, the GFS, the American in the yellow. The lines here, by the way, are isobars. When they're tightly packed together, that means a stronger system, meaning the change in pressure over, over a distance is much greater, deeper storm, more intense storm. So at this point in time, we're only at Thursday, two days from now. GFS already shows probably a tropical storm, maybe even a category one hurricane at that point in time. So that's not too far away. European lagging behind, just starting to get its act together. Jump out Friday into the first half of the weekend into Sunday. Now you've got the GFS and European pretty much in the same area, right? So it's almost stationary, but it's taking advantage of that very warm, deep ocean water. And why a stationary system moving over that environment is, is a detail we can't overlook is because when you get an intensifying storm, it tends to mix up the ocean water. It's called upwelling. But when that deep water, warm water, extends down to a depth and it's upwelling, it's just continuously upwelling warm water. So it's not self-limiting as it otherwise would be in, say, a different part of the basin. So even though it's heading in the same area, it still has plenty of energy to work with. So GFS and European are showing this. They're indicating this by showing intensification while sitting pretty much over the same area in the western portions of the Caribbean. Let's jump out a few more days. It begins to turn to the northwest. So here's where they start to differ. You've got the European that takes that turn to the north and west a little bit later, meaning land interaction here is more likely over the Yucatan. Meanwhile, you've got the GFS at this point could be a very strong hurricane moving right through the Yucatan Channel, okay? Meaning no land interaction stays intact over the warm ocean water of the Caribbean heading into the Gulf of Mexico. This is Tuesday, okay? A week from now, we'll go a little farther out in time. Now, both models take it north, and then they take that jog to the north and east. We're going to have a front coming in from the northwest, so that's going to pick it up and drift it to the north and east. GFS says, um, like in the area to the north of Tampa, potentially, here, as a strong hurricane, potentially. To the south of it, the European lags behind, but similar intensity-wise, could potentially impact areas farther to the south of Tampa, maybe Fort Myers area, north of Miami, potentially here. This is the middle of next week, so over a week from now. This will certainly change, but this could possibly be in play, the west coast of Florida, for a potential November hurricane strike, which is very rare. Last time Florida got hit by a hurricane in November, it was a Category 1, and that was a Nicole in 2022 that hit near Vero Beach with 75 mile per hour winds. Before that, it was back in 1985 on the 21st of November, category two along the panhandle with 100 miles per hour. That was Kate. Could potentially Sarah be stronger than that? Yeah, it's a possibility with the overall environmental conditions that are still in play, but nothing is set in stone yet. But I just want to let you know that it is very rare for this to happen, but it certainly could be in the cards. We are up to Sarah on our list. We have now crossed the threshold of making 2024 a hyperactive or overactive season. Okay, we only got four names left, and we use Sarah, we only have three names left. So very interesting to see here as we uh, get towards the last week and a half, two weeks, really, of hurricane season here up through November the 30th. All right, we're going to do videos on this all week. We'll probably have development here before the week is out for sure. You can find me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, X, or TikTok. I'll see you again tomorrow.